So what we are talking today is about the improvements over the years in the endodontic files. So the files have changed, have some improvements in the movement, in the kinematics, in the alloy, and that's what we are talking about in this next minutes. So uh, the biggest advance, or one of the biggest advance that we had in endodontics was the Niti alloy. So the nickel titanium alloy was real a real improvement in in our field, and the manufacturers could and can now uh, produce files with a lot of flexibility and improvement of it. So when we pass through uh, the stainless steel files to Niti files, we have a a real improvement in the flexibility of these files. And this was very, very good for us because the, the main problem that we have in endodontics is the root canal morphology uh, full of bacteria. So we need to, to clean mechanically, uh, also associated to a, a good solution to irrigate the root canal, a good dressing, but uh, it's important to remove this mechanically too. So uh, the files need to adjust in the curvature, uh, in the curved canals, and this was something very good for us. Uh, my experience in endodontics starts in 1999 when I had my first uh, contact with this, this area, and since then I could try a lot of different files, different brands, and different concepts in root canal preparation. And today we have a new instrument, Prima Files, that I came into the market with a very interesting characteristics. And I think uh, this is a, a good option that we have now. And I'll show you something about that. But before, I, I want to uh, stand and uh, say where are we in endodontics and how the files uh, evolved since uh, we pass through the hand instrumentation to a motor drive continuous uh, rotation. So we had a, a very uh, important improvement in the kinematics of the instrumentation, the root kind of preparation, and a very, very good improvement than the other. And this was uh, a moment that the endodontics uh, were more, well, the endodontics was more democratized. So now our students from the first years and the first contact with endodontics are capable to perform good root kind of preparations because we have a much uh, better product in our hands with a uh, motor driving uh, file, which is, is very, very good for everyone the specialists, the general practice, and even the academic uh, uh, students. But the biggest problem when the, this kind of, uh, kind of movement came to the market, these this files came to the market with this increase of, of facility was the fracture. So uh, specialists, general uh, clinicians, started to use these files, but they start to broke in their hands. And this was a big, big, big problem in that moment. So uh, to improve that and to avoid the fracture, the first point, the first thing is to understand how these uh, files fractures. So the nitty titanium, the nickel titanium uh, alloy files and all of them uh, can break in three different ways. The first of all is the fatigue. So we need to replace the files uh, when they have some kind of deformation and we can't use this uh, many times. We have to use this uh, and replace the files before it suffers the fatigue. The second possible uh, cause of fracture is the flexural fracture. So I'll show some videos that will be very easy to, to understand as the torsional fracture too. So the flexural fra fracture is associated with the alloy, the flexibility of the file. 
So when I have a, a file in rotation in the root canal, uh, in a curved root canal, we have a point of stress and it can break if you don't use the right movement, pushing it in and out of the, the, the canal. Uh, this is important. And even with a flexible file, we need to, to use the movement in the proper manner. But with a flexible file, which a which, uh, more flexible alloy, will avoid this kind of, of fracture too. The second fracture is associated with uh, immobilization of the tip of the file. So when we have this immobilization, the tip is locked in some place, in somewhere in the root canal. It's still in rotation and will deformate and fracture. So we can see in slow motion, it's easy to understand, to see. So the file starts when it's locked, it starts to deformate until it breaks and it's a big problem for us. So understanding the manner that the, the uh, file can fracture, uh, the manufacturers and the researchers uh, started to look for different motion, a different alloy. And the first improvement was in the motion. So the, the manufacturers started to, to work with this reciprocating movement this oscillatory movement uh, in a different kinematics and something very interesting because it's a much safer movement. In these videos, we can understand better. So in the left side, you can see this in a continuous rotation, the same side, the same uh, uh, movement. And when the tip is locked, I'm sure this, it will uh, break. So we have a more effective movement in the left side because it completes the route faster, so it cuts more denting. But uh, in the right in the right side, we can see a safer movement because the tip, if it's locked, uh, the the file goes to the goes backwards and will not be locked anymore. And this is very very safe. Uh, it's a a much safer movement than the left side. So now you have both. We have continuous rotation and reciprocating uh, uh, rotation. And the literature supports us with this uh, safer movement, uh, showing us that the same file and two erased rotary instruments uh, used in different uh, kinematics shows, shows different results too. So they were uh, much safer in the reciprocating motion and they spent much more time uh, to fracture than when it was used in rotary file, in rotary, in continuous rotation. And this is a systematic review supporting that. This is the high level of evidence that we have and was very, very interesting to understand this, the, this safer movement and to see that it's really, really better to use this in reciprocated motion when I have a, a curved canal and I need a safer movement. But another improvement that we had was in the alloy. So the heat treatment of the same uh, uh, nickel titanium uh, alloy was very important to, to improve their, uh, uh, their characteristics and especially in the flexibility. So after the retreatment, we can use a much more flexible file. And this file from Prima has even a, a memory, a control of memory that you can bend the file and it will, uh, it will still bend it after you take out the, the pressure or the force. So we can compare in the left side a non heated nickel titanium file, in the right side a, treated, a heat treated uh, nickel titanium file, and you can see that the right one is much more flexible, and even with this memory control, uh, staling, staling, uh, bended after re the removal of the pressure. 
And this occurs because uh, the manufacturer can work with different phases of nickel titanium titan alloy. So we have two phases, basically two phases in this alloy. The first one is the austenite, responsible for the hardness and less plastic deformation. So the, the when we have much, uh, when we have more austenite phase in the alloy, we have a, a harder alloy, and the file will not deformate in the plastic way. If you have a, a much pressure, a lot of pressure in the the file, it will break. Do not deformate, but it will break. And when we have martensite phase or more martensite phase in this alloy, we have a, a increase in the malleability, flexibility, and it's a safer uh, file to work, but it can't be uh, too much soft, soft, because if it is, it will not cut the dentin. So we have to work in something in the middle, uh, working with Faustanite and Martensite fade at the same time. And this is very important. And when we have this heat treatment in the files, who improve their their flexibility and we increase their uh, resistance to fracture as the literature supports us with a lot of studies in this area. So this this memory control is interesting because uh, the the martensite the austenite phase in the, of the alloy is controlled by temperature. So in the room temperature we have a, a and we have some of the martensite phase and some of the austenite phase of the alloy. And when we heat the alloy, we increase the austenite uh, quantity in the, the same file and we we'll remember the original form and we will go back to straight to, our, to its original form. So it's very interesting. As you can see this, you can see this video, when you put heat in the file, it will return to original form, remembering uh, how is the file in the first moment. Even with a lot of deformations, uh, as you can see, not just bending the file, but a deformation all over it. So when we put heat, it will remember original form and we will return to it. It's very, very nice, very interesting to understand. In slow motion, we can see uh, this returning for original form, it's very, very, it's a uh, comprehensive video to see that in slow motion going back. Even with uh, big deformations. But when we put heat in the file and it is not uh, coming back to original form, uh, we have a per permanent deformation and the file has to be replaced. So as I told you, it's a game with uh, temperature. So here we are deformating the file. A lot of uh, deformation in this file. We can put some cold air and it will be very, very soft because we increase the martensite phase. And when we hit it again, it will increase the austenite phase of the alloy and we will return to original form to memory. So. Uh, it's a comprehensive way to understand that. And now we have an improvement in alloy, heat treated nickel titanium, and we have improvement in, in the motion, a reciprocating kinematics, which is very, very good and bring us a safer movement in a safer alloy. But why everyone is not changing the continuous rotation to reciprocate motion? It's related some, with some issues, and one of them is uh, the possible extrusion of debris, the more extrusion of debris using this in a, in a reciprocate motion, and the patient can be associated, and the postoperative pain can be associated with this motion in some studies. So uh, when I need to choose something safe, I use the reciprocate motion, but when I need to, to work in a common canal without any problems, I can use the, hot, the continuous rotary motion that will not have any problems.
So the, the continuous kinematics came back with these heat treated uh, files because we need to choose uh, which we, we want to work with uh, in the clinical uh, point of view. And it's exactly in this moment that Prima Files launch, uh, the Prima launch their files with a continuous movement or reciprocated movement, uh, giving us two important and uh, nice, good options uh, to work with files. So I'm conducting some research in our university. Uh, these are primary results. And here you can see uh, in a microscope view, an electron, uh, scanning electron microscope uh, view, uh, the design of the file. So it's a triangular, a convex triangular uh, design with an active tip and a very well and very designed file to cut and to remove all the debris from the root cap. So Prima has two, two options. The first one, this one is the continuous tape, the prime, Prima taper gold is to use in a rotary continuous movement and the Prima one gold in the reciprocating motion, uh, which I'll show you uh, the characteristics of this file. For this, this kit, uh, they, uh, we have uh, four possibilities. Uh, they, the files are called small, primary, medium, and large file. Uh, we have different characteristics in the tip and the taper of the file. So the first one, the small one, is used in very narrow or tiny uh, canals. So usually we will start with the primary one, not the small one, but when we need uh, some, uh, some file or a file with different characteristics uh, for narrow uh, canals, we can use this small one. So it's a 0.20 file with a conicity, a taper in the body of the file. So it, it, it gives a, a uh, uh, cervical and uh, the middle of the canal preparation that uh, can, can perform very well. So you can see here, uh, all, all the root uh, files, all, all the endodontic files must uh, have their space to go. So we start with hand files, creating, scouting the root canal and creating the space for the, the subsequent files always uh, with a solution inside the canal. So it's important. And here we can see the performance of the file, cutting in the cervical and in the middle third of the canal. It's important to understand that it's a tiny tip, so it will not clean a lot, but will open space in narrow cana canals. The second one, the most used one is the primary. Uh, it's a 0.25 file with an increased taper in the middle of the, 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 the file too. So it's a, a good file to start treatments for almost all canals. So here we can see the performance inside the, this plastic block. So it's cutting uh, the reason in the middle of the canal and especially in the, the tip of the canal. So it's a, a, a good file to start almost all the, the treatments. So you can see that it cuts a lot and you need the, the irrigations to remove all these debris uh, that are inside the canal. So you have to, to wash a lot to remove this debris and to pass to another file. And usually we will go until the medium or the large one, depending on the characteristics, the morphology of the root canal. So the medium one is a 0.35 file. Uh, it has a less increase of the taper. So it's a, a file to, to 
increase the diameter of the apical size, uh, the apical area of the canal to clean better that, that area and a very interesting file to, to finish, to, to end the root canal preparations in me, me, mesial uh, roots of mandibular molars, buccal roots of uh, maxillary molars, and it's a very, very, very interesting file to use. So, as I told you, to not cut so much in the middle or in the cervical third, but to uh, increase the diameter of the tip. And this is very interesting for, for a final root canal preparation in some, of, uh, in some teeth that we have a curved canal. Last one is the large Prima One Gold. It's a point 45 uh, in the tip with a, a small increase in the, the taper. So it's a finishing file to increase the, the diameter of the apical size, the apical area in canals that we can uh, cut a little more and clean a little more. And as you can see, sometimes the, the file will be uh, we will have a deformation, and in this case, a plastic deformation, because when we hit the defile, it it turned it back to original form. So it's very it's an interesting way to see if you if you have a permanent uh, deformation or a plastic deformation. And the glutacon will fit perfectly. This is a point forty five glutacon, and if it fits. Uh, perfectly uh, all over the root canal and now we can fill the, the root canal without any problems.